My exhortation for us this morning is that we each do what it takes in each season of life to have and keep good friends. I believe friendship, real friendship, is, a, is, is as vital to human life as oxygen and water. It's not sweet or nice or valuable, but essential. I wonder if you agree with that. I wonder if your life says that you agree with that. I believe none of us ever really lives unless we're known and encouraged and challenged and pursued and disappointed and forgiven and loved by good friends. I actually believe it's one of the most important lessons of the last couple of years. If any of us had started to neglect friendship, the pandemic almost immediately taught us just how much we need it. When the Son of God came and took on flesh, he didn't live and serve alone. No, he made and kept a few good friends. Jesus could have spent all of his time with crowds, but he spent most of his time with just 12 guys. And even as he went to die for the sins of the world, he turned to all who would follow him, including us, he turned and he said, John 15, you are my friends if you do what I command you. I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from the Father I have made known to you. The Christian gospel is that God himself befriends sinners in Christ. He befriends us in Christ. Jesus says, he befriends us in Christ and he calls us in Christ to be faithful friends to one another. He says, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Friendship, as ordinary as it may sound or feel at times, friendship is not peripheral or supplementary to reality. No, it is at the core of who we are and why we exist. It sets us apart in a world desperate for love, desperate to belong, desperate for friendship. Because humans need good friends to live. So what is a good friend? In short, a truly good friend is someone who consistently helps you see, enjoy, and obey God. So who does that for you? Who helps you see a little more of God when you're together? Who helps you hate and kill your sin? Who inspires you to keep serving, keep working, keep giving, keep loving? Who consistently leaves you wanting more of Jesus? They may not be your easiest friends. They might not be the people you get along with best. They might be older than you or younger than you. You may not have much else in common. Some good friendships will come and go for various reasons. Some will start slow and then bloom later on. Some will carry us through short, intense trials and others will walk with us over decades of mountains and valleys in our life. However God brings friends like these into your life though, and however long he keeps them there, make the most of them. Some of us might, might even need to make a call or send a text today. Do what you can to have and keep 
good friends. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of good friends. We could spend hours, days, weeks even, going around the room, sharing how you have met particular needs in each of our lives through particular friends. Burdens carried, hearts lifted, trials endured, meals eaten, laughs shared, tears cried, prayers prayed and answered, sins confronted and put to death. And that's my specific prayer in this moment now, that the friendships in this church, in our church, would be friendships that overcome sin and temptation together, so that we might see more of you together. We want to walk in the light. We want to put to death the deeds of darkness. And we know how easily Satan can deceive and tempt us when we're cut off from one another and alone. And so we come to you now, together, for a few quiet moments to confess our sins to you. Father, it is by your grace that we refuse to walk in darkness, and we long, by the help of your Holy Spirit, to walk in the light, to come into the light. And this morning, in this moment, you've heard our hearts as we have confessed our sins to you, as we have acknowledged our failures and brought them to you, desperate for your mercy. And now I ask, Father, remind us of your great grace your great love for us in Jesus Christ. Jesus, who is everything. His cross, which is everything to us. Encourage our hearts now. Through the gospel of your son, we ask in his name, amen. I wanna invite you to stand as you're able for the assurance of pardon. Church, this morning we have confessed our sins And so now hear the good news. The Bible tells us that when we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So this morning, to all who humbly seek the mercy of God, I say to you, in Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven.